The Streamline Connection is all about connecting your mind and your actions so that you can live a more organized life. Most people don't realize that organization is the key to freedom, wealth, and prosperity. And they don't realize that they feel stressed and overwhelmed all the time because they're disorganized. And being organized is not just about being tidy, although that's what a lot of the industry uh, makes it all about. It's actually about the, the connection between that control you crave and the freedom you're really looking for. So organization is the powerful tool to um, help you get control of that external space. It starts with the mindset because our external space is a reflection of what's going on internally, the internal space. And so if you want to scale your business, build your wealth, take patience and have more freedom, you really need to create a nurturing and supportive environment where you can thrive and understanding that connection between the mindset, simplicity and focus for productivity is going to make all that easier. For those of you that don't know who I am, I'm a certified professional organizer and simplicity expert, as well as a money breakthrough business coach. So I bring it together. And lately I've been studying how habits affect your productivity and the role that money mindset plays on your clutter. So it all comes together that way. I typically work with creative uh, entrepreneurs to connect organization, productivity, and money mindset. So you can build wealth using flexible systems that let you work less and have more fun. So that's the basis of why I put this show together. Um, and we've been having some fabulous conversations and um, exploring a little more in depth what being organized really means. It's not just about putting boxes, things in boxes and putting labels on it or the interior design aspect of order. It's about how to live a more organized life. So you want to do um, in your daily life to make that happen, how to practice that, how to make many of the things we kind of dread about being organized kind of uh, unconscious behaviors, habits, if you will. So you don't have to think about them as, as stressful endeavors. They're more the things that allow you to do uh, more of what you really want to do. So today I don't have a guest, but I thought I would um, let you know about the five rules of order. Now, this is something I've been exploring and putting together for my clients for a while. It is the five key concepts that help you stay organized once you are organized. And on the surface, they seem fairly straightforward, but we're going to take it a little bit um, deeper today and see what what's behind the the kind of sound bites about organization that you hear over and over and why organized people live by these rules. There's actually more than five, but I thought I would just start with the five underlying concepts um, for you today. So the first thing is declutter, right? People don't like to purge their stuff. They don't want to get rid of anything. They just want to organize what they have so that, but they want to have more of it. And so they want to create more space, but you can't create more space if there isn't more space. <laughs> so think of your clutter. Let's just say you are trying to store more clothes in your closet and you call a professional organizer because you, you think your clothes are disorganized. Well, they might be, but probably they just need some decluttering and then it'll be easy enough to do a couple things to organize them very easily. So the reason professional organizers talk about decluttering so much is because why would you organize things you don't need? Why would you maintain things you don't need in your life, right? You're just hiding stuff, stuffing things in. It's like if you pour a glass of milk and you get to the top of the glass, don't keep pouring, right? Or don't keep pouring and taking a sip at the same time. Um, you have to actually take a couple big gulps so there's room for the cookie, right? You gotta figure out what you're gonna do. If you just keep adding more stuff and getting a container that allows you to like suck air so you can store more stuff, you're not really solving the problem of being organized you're hiding things from yourself. So I love this concept. <clears throat> don't organize what you don't need in your life anyway, right? Why waste your time on that? 
it's time and space. If you're looking for less overwhelm, you want to make things easier. And easier is fewer options. And fewer options means you have more space around your things. I have several clients that regularly will go back when I'm showing them the work we've done for the day, taking them on the little tour of updates we've done and what we've achieved, that will automatically start to squish things back together. So I'll arrange the pantry and baking items will be over, snacks will be over here and they'll kind of like smush them back together to see how much space is left for putting something else there. It's like, no, let's leave it spaced so that you can grab one thing without knocking everything else over right? Isn't that a problem in your pantry or your laundry room or your closet or your bathroom? You got to grab the thing and it knocks four other things over and that makes more of a problem. All of that is because there's not enough space around your things. Things need space for the energy that allows you to recognize the things that are helping you in your life. So that's why we say decluttering is actually the second step. The first step is vision, and we've talked about that before on other episodes, but from the practical perspective, hearing should be ongoing, constant editing process. Every time you see something that is in your way, evaluate it, make a decision about it at that point in time. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a little allergy throat today. So think about that, right? You try on a shirt, it doesn't fit. Do you put it back in your closet or you do, put, do you put it in a bin for giveaway, right? Let's make it easier. The, the It's become obvious, the pen in the cup that doesn't write. Don't put it back in the pen cup. Don't put the empty milk bottle back in the, in the fridge. It goes to the next phase of its purpose, right? It goes out, out of your way. So that's part of decluttering. It's gotta be a constant ongoing. But if you haven't decluttered in a while or ever, um, which many of my never even thought about decluttering, why would I? I have an extra room I can put piles of things in. I have a garage, I have a storage unit. It builds and builds and builds and then you have more and more to do before you feel like you have the freedom to go explore your life, right? <clears throat> Let's do it together. Let's explore your life while you declutter. And that way you have more idea of how you want your life to actually be, who and how you want to be in your space. It can almost simultaneously. There has to be a little bit of thought ahead of time, but really the decluttering process is to help you figure out who you want to be <clears throat> moving forward. Do you still need the old accoutrements from the activities you don't participate in anymore? Um, <clears throat> I say these things over and over because one of these days it'll sink in and you'll hear it. Everybody hears it differently and at the right time for them. And so sorry if it feels for some of you, but it's important to keep reiterating so we can rewire our brains to realize that that's the best way to go. Um, why would you dust all the things that you don't need? And why would you not dust the things that you have and then complain about how dirty your house is and how no one helps you, right? It's got to come from both sides. You have to set up the space of how you want to be living, and then you maintain it from there. Um, think about it this way. Would you rather um, be in charge of all the things at your um, corner store or at Costco? <laughs> like if it was up to you, right? Where would you rather put your effort? Into something small where you could grab just the things you need or where you have to deal with all the things, all the big things. All right, I'm putting a lot of focus on this, eliminate the excess, the declutter part of um, rules of order because it is the foundation for all of it. So eliminate the excess. We've got to take a quick break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be back right after this break. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. And today we're talking about the five rules of order. We just went over the first one, which is eliminate the excess, declutter your stuff, stop maintaining the stuff you don't need, um, and dusting the things that are in your way. So second rule, is that you gather like things together. And this one can be controversial. There's a lot 
tips out there in magazines and things that say, keep things near where you use them. That might be true in some instances, but what I want you to start with, if you're resetting your, your whole space, is to think about gathering all like things together first. There is a concept of um, contraction and expansion um, that is a really valuable way to experiment with your organ skills. And so the first thing you wanna do is gather everything together and then you can expand it to the places it's gonna live. But it never fails. I have had clients that think they're out of air freshener and we go around the house and we've got, I'm not kidding you, 38 cans of air freshener. Um, I have clients that think they are gonna run out of socks and they've got 58 pairs of socks in their backup area and about 100 pairs in their sock drawer. So think about that. If you keep things separate, you don't always remember that you have a backup supply somewhere else or that you put three cans of toilet bowl cleaner under the bathroom sink in the guest bathroom, and then you think you're out in the master bedroom, so you go buy more, forgetting that you actually have two more that you could use up first. So it's really important to gather everything together in a central location and then disperse it to the right places around the house. It's much better to have one backup supply and one version of the things you need near your area. Um, and so that's what you wanna do. Also, it helps your favorites. What happened to that favorite pen you used to use all the time? And your kid borrowed it to do their homework four nights ago and it never came back to your pencil cup, right? What it's gonna allow you to find all those things that are kind of missing right now. Everybody has it. There's a little bit of everything all over the place. Let's get all the batteries in the same place. Let's get all the toothpaste in the same place. See what I'm saying? It's gonna help you save money because you're not gonna be buying duplicates. It's gonna help you use things up before they expire, thus eliminating the whole argument of is it still good after the expiration date. Um, all of these things come together to help streamline your life. It takes extra steps out of the rest of your day. So um, first step is always gather like things together. And you do it in stages. So, um, there's a bit of a misconception, like with Marie Kondo's method, she says, do all your clothes at the same time. Well, yes, but if you don't have enough space or you have so many areas where the stuff is that it feels very overwhelming to do all of it at once, you do all of the clothes in one room and then you do all of the clothes in another room and then you do all the clothes in a third room, right? You don't have to do all three rooms simultaneously. So for the purposes of this, this rule, it's gather like things together in that room. And if say you find four batteries in your desk drawer and you keep batteries in the utility room, go take those four batteries to the utility room at the end of your work session. Um, and then when you get to the laundry room, utility room and get to batteries, then you put them in a more organized fashion. So you're getting the stuff out of the way of the room. You're trying to declutter. You're moving it to the place where you think it's probably going to go or where most of that item is. Um, and that way it's there when you get to that room. So this is to totally closely related to designate a place for everything to live, right? You have to gather things and then you decide where they're going to live. If you have 17 different spatulas, you may not keep them in the crock on the counter. You may have a dedicated baking drawer with very specific spatulas in it. So that's the kind of thing where designate where it's going to be either by, and, and think about it by room. Like where's that activity usually take place? You got the room and then you have zones within the room. Um, and then, like I said, you may have to get some spots for backup supply. Um, but having one central backup supply makes it kind of like going to the store in your own house when you run out of something. So we're going to talk about rotation system in a minute, but we got to talk about the designating a place for everything to live. Um, you know, I use the example all the time of we know the ice cream goes in the freezer. So you got to do that for every little thing in your house. So you know where it goes. Then you don't have to think about it all the time. You don't have to go, well, this is in my way again. I'm just going to move it over here for today and then re regroup and say, I've got to figure out where that goes. I'm going to put it back over here today. It doesn't live in either space, right? It's living in limbo. It's undecided, undetermined where that should go. So when you bring stuff in, know where it's going to go. But when you decide where things go, 
you want to look at the frequency of use. It doesn't make sense to store your Christmas decorations in the front cabinet, right? They need to be behind, up above, down below, in another room, tucked out of the way. Um, things like a KitchenAid mixer, you're going to also need to decide how to deal with the weight of it. Is it heavy enough to lift off of that shelf or lower shelf, or do you want it at waist level or create or invest in one of those crazy contraptions that pulls it up for you. How frequent do you use the thing? What is the weight of it? And what is the shape? You can't store everything by shape, but if you store things of fun funny shapes close to where they're gonna be used and put them up high or down low, um, better off than mixing the really weird shape right next to the thing, unless you have that amount of space. Um, so sometimes you got to move the stuff that goes with it down below with the thing that's a weird shape. So again, I'm going to use the KitchenAid mixer because it's so obvious. It's a weird shape. It's heavy. Um, it takes up a lot of room and it has a lot of accessories. What if you kept it on a shelf at waist height and you also were able to keep all the accessories that go with it right near it? That would be ideal, right? But what if you don't have that kind of space and you have to keep the accessories somewhere else? Well, you can find a smaller space or a bin or something to keep all that stuff that you can pull it to the mixer when you need it on the count, like if you leave it on the counter or whatever. So that's what I mean by deal with the size and shape um, only when you have to. You know, continue with the plan, store like things near where you're going to use them. But if it's a weird shape, you have to accommodate that, right? You have That's where the adjustment and the experiment comes into it. Um, and then ease of access. Um, again, we're back to how much space is around the stuff. How much decluttering do you need to do? Can you grab that jacket off the hanger so stuffed in the closet that you, you forget you even have it or it gets, when you grab it, it knocks four other things to the ground, right? So think about that. And if it's something you only access once every two or three years, you might not need it. You might be able to borrow that from someone. Um, if it's something you use once a year, store it higher or out of the way and make sure you use it or start looking at what other thing might serve that same purpose. Do you really need a second lasagna pan or could you use the one lasagna pan plus two brownie pans, right? In a pinch, what do you need? What do you need extra of? Um, but always designate the space for it to live and label it if you have to, even if it's just you alone. And there's still a few things that I label just because I tend to kind of forget or I couldn't decide which area to put it. And then I made a decision and I can't remember the decision three weeks from now when I have to put the thing away. So label even for yourself, especially if you have other people involved in your home or office space so they know where things go as well. Um, make sure you double consider what kind of lids or um, doors are on things so that you can get at things easily. Is the bin easy enough to lift up to look at and put back? Or is it easier to squat down and root around in the bin while it's still in the cabinet? Those kinds of questions are essential when you're actually determining this, the place things are going to live. Um, so do you see how that works together? You bring like things together. You determine this is where the, this is how much space I have to dedicate to it. So I may need to get rid of a few more things or I might have space to fill in the things that are missing. But now you know because it's all gathered together and you can define what kind of space you want um, to devote to it. Um, and again, if you have overstock of stuff, if you have duplicates that you will use up, that creates the overstock situation. That's what they call it in retail, right? It's the box on the top of the shelf. It's the stuff in the cabinet under the display table. It's the stuff in the back room that you bring back out once you've sold through or used up that stuff. Um, so there's lots of little things to consider here and it can feel overwhelming, but if you start simple, like socks go in the drawer with socks, maybe the underwear drawer is right next to that sock drawer. Maybe the jeans are on a shelf in the closet. Maybe they're hung in the closet, but still you've got all the clothes in the dressing area, right between the dresser and, and the closet. 
you don't keep extras in the baby's room because the baby needs that for those, not yours. <laughs> You're never going to actually go to the garage to get that extra jacket. If it doesn't fit in your coat closet, maybe you don't need another jacket. Um, so you just keep whittling down and defining, and that's where the fun comes in, right? That's where you put a placement on it, and then you decide if you need more container around it, right? Um, and it, it, it's where you get to experiment. What's the right solution for you? Not for me. Many people don't like my method of organizing because it's very much um, a combo of piles of stuff and things in, in well-labeled drawers that are easy to drop in. But once I'm in the drawer, there's not that much organization, um, except in a couple spots where I need the access. So for reason, I'm a little OCD about paper clips and binder clips. I've got lots of different styles and they all have their own separate compartment and they stay separate because I need to access the right one when I need it. And it was worth spending a little extra time on that. Is it worth the extra time to do things like alphabetize your spices? If you, if you cook a lot, oh heck yes. Um, it helps keep the, the duplicates down um, and it helps you find the quickly the things you need for any recipe at ever, any given time. And you'll know where it goes. You'll know the allspice goes back at the front of the line and you will know that the uh, red pepper is filed under P for peppers because you use a lot of it and it's um, and a lot of different kinds. So that definition of where things go keeps you from storing the ice cream under the bathroom sink, right? And it works for everything else in your house as well. Now, once you get it in the freezer, it's up to you if you wanna take the extra time to put it on the right shelf or in the door or what area you're gonna keep it in. All right, we've gotta take another break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we are doing the five rules of order today. Uh, and we'll go back into the last couple when we come back. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The link's around here somewhere. And today, it's just me talking about the five rules of order. Um, these are kind of rules that organized people live by and understand. So I consider them like key concepts to staying organized long term. Um, the first one, of course, eliminate the excess. Get that stuff you don't need out of your way. Declutter, declutter, declutter. Because why would you waste things you don't need? Um, the second one is to gather like things together first. You may expand and um set things in other places later, but you need to know what you're starting with, right? You need to know all where all the googly eyes are. Um, and then third, we want to designate a space for everything. Where is it going to live? Where would you find it? Um, another helpful way of looking at where would you find it um, is like when you go shopping. If you go to the store regularly, you know where everything is in the store, right? You know exactly where to go get it. Well, you wanna have that same confidence at your house, right? You know um, the office supplies are over here and you know the, the pancake mix is on aisle six and you know the ice cream will be in your, once you pick it up out of the freezer case at the back of the store, right? <clears throat> All the things are connected. And if you think about how can you create a space to live and work out of that you know where everything is. Just like when you run to the store to get the thing you need. Same concept applied in a different situation. <clears throat> so let's see, we've got the first three. The fourth ruler is determining a rotation system. This is <clears throat> tied a little bit to that um, overstock situation. What is your comfort level? Um, Various people bring different kind of baggage into this this particular one. I used to, um, when I first moved to San Francisco many years ago, I didn't have a job, I didn't have a huge amount of savings and I was in school and I was always afraid I would run out of something completely necessary like toilet paper or toothpaste um, that I would always have one extra of those things but I would buy almost everything else like to the level of exactly how much I needed because my comfort level was if I don't have toilet paper, I'm going to be very cranky. <laughs> um, but 
it was all thing that proved to me that I could take care of myself, that I could look at the future and that kind of thing. I don't still have that same fear that I did back then, but I still really like to have one backup of many of my most frequently used things. That allows me to not have to run to the store that day. It allows me to run to the store on the day I usually go run my errands. The second component of how to, how to set your rotation system. And by rotation system, I mean, when are you gonna replace the things in your house? <clears throat> when, is the clothes, when are the clothes too worn out to continue wearing and you need some new t-shirts? When are you going to replenish those socks? When are you gonna pick up new shampoo? When are you gonna get um, another can of spices that you only at Christmas? You kind of have to decide what your comfort level is for when you're going to replace things. So. In addition to your comfort level, you have to kind of take into consideration your um, ability to deal with expiration dates or best buy dates. Um, are you the kind of person that waits till something's moldy before you don't eat it or do you go by the date? Um, same with medications. There's so much flying out around out there. Um, advice about things are still good, they're not good. You get to decide what you're comfortable with when you look at the research and things. Um, so you get to decide when that's gonna rotate. But this also applies to silly things like, when are you gonna get a new playlist in your iTunes library? When are you going to update it? When are you gonna back up your computer? When are you going to rotate out the older magazines and keep only new magazines? What is your system for rotating your bank statements, um, whether they're online or, or physical? you get to decide the frequency of how often you're gonna do your laundry, how often you're gonna buy new towels, how often you're gonna change your sheets. All of these things are technically rotating systems, right? And by that is how do you keep things fresh? <clears throat> I recently helped a client go through a whole bunch of table linens and she had lots of placemats and napkins and she lives alone and often has like one friend over for dinner or whatever. So many of her placemats and napkins had two that were faded from laundering. And then the other two were perfectly good, but she couldn't use them as a set of four because two were way more faded than the others. So think about how you would solve that. I take my placemats and napkins and fold them together. And then when I do the wash, it goes to the bottom of the pile. So I'm always grabbing ones off the top and it's rotating. It's like the food at the grocery store. You put the older cans up front and the newer cans behind so that you're selling them by the expirations, right? Uh, you put the mascara you're currently using and put all the still sealed ones in the back of the drawer. So you use up the mascara because it goes bad quickly, most quickly out of everything in your bathroom. You don't want that lingering while you use 12 different kinds, right? You want to use up one and then go to the next one. So think about that as well. How many ver things do you need um, can you use them up? Do you even need to buy body lotion for the next 12 years? Or do you have enough samples and, and um, bottles of half used around the house that you could use up? All of these things fit together to take up less space, take up less energy and time shopping, um, and to feel confident that you have what you need when you need it. And by planning that a little bit, just thinking it through, writing it down if you need to, create a spreadsheet if you're really intense, whatever it is that you feel confident and comfortable with, do that. But it's part of how you get to create your life. You get to determine those standards. How often are you gonna clean your house? How often are you gonna take out the trash or wipe out the refrigerator? All of these things are part of rotation systems house. You get to create how you're gonna deal with these things. All right. So the last rule of order is to reset your space daily. Now, this is the one I actually struggle with the most. I live alone. I know I'm organized in the background. So daily, I don't necessarily do the dishes, but I do get everything because the space I'm in is not where the dirty dishes are stored, right? They're stored near the sink. I don't have a dishwasher or they would be in the dishwasher, but that knowledge that I have systems in the background and I do dishes twice a week when I can fill the whole sink 
allows me to continue using the rest of the house without finding gross, dirty dishes all over the place, right? They at least get rinsed and set on the drain board while I wait to to run the soap and the scrubber over them. Um, the resetting the space, little things like putting the remote control the remote control back on the coffee table or in the holder, um, returning and charging all of the controllers for video games, plug your phone every night, clearing your desk and putting just what you're gonna work on first thing tomorrow morning um, in front of you so that you're not distracted by all the other little clutter that you didn't take care of yesterday. Putting things away, putting the ice cream back in the freezer. Um, all of those things are part of resetting your space. It is both to practice keeping things where they belong and setting yourself up for success next time you're in that area, right? How frustrating is it when you go to make your coffee in the morning and you forgot to change out the, or clean out yesterday's coffee grinds? So much easier to do it the night before and then wake to freshly brewed coffee on a timer or easy pour over because all you have to do is add the coffee to the filter because you've already pulled it out for tomorrow. About returning things to the rooms they belong in. When the kid accidentally or the dog brings you the toy in the in the bathroom, you don't leave it in the bathroom, you take it back out to the toy area. Um, all of those things are part of this resetting the space, right? See how it's all fitting together. You, ha you know exactly what you have, where it lives, how often you're gonna replace it and you know where it goes when you reset your space and it's there to support your confidence and productivity the next day, right? It all works together. Um, the prepping for tomorrow is really interesting, um, especially if you teach it to kids. If you do that, you know, prep all their outfits, they're gonna learn to get dressed earlier um, in their life and you won't have to deal with it as much. You work with them to create outfits and then send them to the right day bin or cubby and they grab the outfit for the day and they know exactly what to wear, right? <laughs> um, they, this can apply to all kinds of things. If you do a lot of food prep on Sunday, you know, on on Saturday, you, you can maybe clear the counters a little extra or pull out the containers or the, the the first thing you're going to cook and you will already be one step on your way for tomorrow. It also helps your unconscious brain just get kind of ready for what's next. So resetting your space is super important and it does not zap your creativity. I hear it all the time. My creative people, it's going to take my creativity away. So what I suggest in that case is yourself the space to do your project, but have all the other projects put away, right? So if you're, it's like when you're in the middle of a puzzle, you don't put all the puzzle pieces back in the box and restart. You have a puzzle table and that is dedicated to that puzzle until you're done with the puzzle. And then you would start, you put it back in the box and start another puzzle, right? That's the concept we're going for here. Reset your space. Make sure none of the puzzle pieces have fallen on the floor. Put them back in the right color pile. Oh, you don't put yours in a color pile? I don't either, but I do do the edges first. <laughs> um, so know your method um, and do as much as you can to support that methodology. Uh, and you, it will be so much easier to stay organized because you're not reinventing the wheel every day. You have a plan and you execute on that plan. Um, and the more you do it, the more you get habitual about it and the less you have to think about it, which frees up more energy to be more creative or have more fun and read a book or watch TV or go for a hike or go on a trip. Um, we're talking all these little things can add two to three hours of time to you that you can do something else besides moving things back and forth. This is in my way. I'm going to put it over here. Oh, wait, I'm doing this now. I have to move that back over there. All those things, the back and forth. It's like dancing, right? <laughs> um, you don't need to do that all the time. You can be much more graceful, deliberate, purposeful with your um, movements of things around your space. You know exactly what needs to happen. Um, so all of these things go together, right? We are... Resetting our space daily, 
because we know what our rotation system is and we know where things go and we uh, have gathered like things together. So it's easy to evaluate when a marker is dead or you need more flour to bake. Um, all of those things go together um, and you are easily able to eliminate all of the excess, keep it decluttered because you have a process, you know the rotation system, you know when the thing becomes clutter, it's too used up, it's too far gone, um, all of those things. We've got to take one more quick break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the connection on Bold Brave TV Network and we'll wrap it all up and, and see some deeper ways these things go together when we come back right after this break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. And today we are reviewing the five rules of order, those key concepts that can help you stay organized for a much longer period of time and take a bit of the overwhelm out of the organizing process in the first place because it's the basics. So you gotta do, it's the foundational elements of it. Um, so let's review real quick. We've got, I know I'm reviewing a lot, but there's a purpose to my madness. And that is the more you hear it, the more it sinks in, the more it's gonna click in your brain. We're rewiring our brains by thinking that this is possible and that it's fairly easy because there's just five rolls. And there goes my earbuds ejecting them. Okay. Um, so first rule of order, eliminate the excess, declutter, purge, trash things, pass them on, sell them, whatever your methodology for getting the stuff out of your area is better than leaving it in the area where it's in your way and you have to maintain it and dust it and deal with it and move it around when it's in your way. So get the stuff that you don't need anymore out of your way. <clears throat> Second thing is gather like things together. Put all of the things together. Put all of your gardening tools together and then put all of your hand tools and bigger tools together. Put all of your fertilizers together. Put all of your soils together. Put all of these together. And then they're all within a... a area, a designated garden area, and then they are within the zone within that gardening area, right? Um, so always think, I talked about the contraction and expansion, always think about the space and the zone. And then maybe that space is within a bigger space, your garage or the shed, right? So there's looking at it where it's um, all connected up. So like things together. Um, I wanted to touch back on when you might want to have a second set of things. So two of the areas I find the biggest sets of duplicates are scissors and tape because people are always wrapping packages on the fly or something. They need scissors in different locations. So I have scissors in my office. I have scissors in with my um, sewing kit and I have a pair of kitchen shears and I actually have a bunch more scissors, but they're more historical scissors. It's a collection of scissors that uh, I grabbed from my grandmother, but other they're not used, they're just left. So they're in a special space that I look at them every once in a while. Um, but the others always go back to the pen cup on the desk, the knife block in the kitchen and stays with the sewing kit. So I always know where they are. Um, they need to be really purposeful. I don't have a set in my gift wrapping thing because I rarely use gift wrap. I use bags and tissue. I don't need to cut things very often in that situation. I can always go to the pencil cup to get it. Um, I It's okay to have some duplicates if you live in a two story or more house so that there's something on each level. And I think it's okay if your house is larger than <clears throat> say 2,500 square feet. So you don't have to walk all the way across the house to get the thing. Um, but Again, what are you comfortable with? Um, mostly when you have too many of something, no one's really clear where the one goes back to. And so it doesn't return to where it needs to go. And that's how you end up with a little bit of everything everywhere. So that I just want to make sure I, I revisited that, that piece of it. Expand it. Only 
if absolutely necessary or it's causing more trouble than it's worth to go to the other room. Um, all right, then we wanna designate the place for things to live. Say you found batteries in different places. Does it make sense to have them in the junk drawer, in the kitchen? I mean, the useful drawer in the kitchen or the utility room or the garage or the office drawer? Where is it you're going to be replacing most batteries? Funny enough, sometimes keeping them under the TV in a media cabinet drawer or cabinet can be actually the most um, ease of use place to put them. So think about that. Makes sense to keep any kitchen goods in the bathroom, <laughs> but it may make a little bit of sense to keep glass cleaner in the kitchen, right? So where are you going to keep the stuff? <clears throat> and remember the overstock goes in a central location that you can shop from, not next to the other bottle of the thing you have dispersed around the house for use in that particular area. Um, all right, <clears throat> determine your rotation systems. Again, this is about figuring out how things are gonna travel through your life. Things are not permanent. Very few things are not permanent. Very few things are permanent, I mean, um, rarely. So when are things gonna get replaced? When is something too old or new? Um, think about your car. I just made the decision to keep my car for another several years. Um, it's 20 years old, but I I feel like we're in that in-between of um, technology and I don't wanna buy in just yet to electric, but I also get really great gas mileage in my car and I like to use things till they die. Alternatively, my best friend buys a new car years. She just loves having a new car. That's her rotation system. So you get to decide where you're gonna be with all the things in your life and how often you're gonna replace them. Um, the last one is reset your space daily, okay? So rule number five, reset, prepare for tomorrow. And the piece I didn't quite get to in the last segment was this applies to the things the people, the projects, the activities, and the time. So reset it, evaluate, give yourself a little bit of feedback. What went well, what didn't go well about pulling all this stuff out? Is it uh, appropriate to reset the space or rethink that craft entirely? Um, are you going to ever need that piece of paper again? Would it make more sense to scan it and have it in the computer or to have it handy on the desk where you can grab it while you're using the computer for other things? Those are all considerations that can go into um, that feedback loop that you need to create when you're resetting the space every day. Uh, is it worth having that person on another project? Is it worth having a different person on that project? What it can apply all the way across the board. So again, this is like all things streamlined connection, right? It all connects and it all works in multiple areas of our life. It works with the things, the people, the time, work, home, away from home, on vacation, at your mom's house. <laughs> all of these things work in multiple situations. And so it's not like learning something new or taking a skill um, that you're never going to use in another way. It's about taking a skill and learning it and mastering it and being able to apply it to all the different areas of your life. Um, it's that concept. It's the bigger picture concept. And then we bring it down to the local, your room, your space area, and then we can expand it to any other area you need to go. You can take it with you. It travels with you. I literally get to a hotel room and my stuff so that I can set up my space the way I love to use it at home. It saves time. All right, we've got to wrap it up for today. Um, but don't forget the five rules of order. You eliminate the excess. You uh, gather like things together. You designate a home. You create a rotation system and you reset your space daily. Um, next time on the show, I am going to have Hazel Thornton, who's a very good friend of mine and another professional organizer who specializes these days in photos and genealogy organizing. And um, she has a new book uh, about what's a story, what's a photo without a story, how to create your family legacy. So I'm super excited to talk to her because memorabilia and photos is one of those areas that just gets away from people. Um, as always, your comments, questions back are welcome. You can send those to Miriam at morethanorganized.net. 
tell all your friends because getting organized together is way more fun. And you can visit morethanorganized.net to find out all about what I have to offer and get your copy of the One Minute Mail Solution. And um, I've got a couple workshops coming up, so you might want to check out the website and see if uh, interested in one of those. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.